Welcome back everyone, Dustin here again, Average Guy Hi-Fi. I've got another five speaker package, uh, home theater package to review for you guys. And this is um, some speakers that I've had for a little while and I've kind of been dreading uh, doing this review, but not for my normal reasons. Usually I don't like reviewing speakers that I really want to keep um, because I know that I'll be selling them as soon as I'm done with the review. But this one's actually for um, different reasons. So what I have right here, um, what I ended up picking up is a set of Pioneer Elite um, I got their kind of the four bookshelf speakers. There's kind of the, how it looks there. Obviously, it looks a little bit different with that on top. And I also got the matching center channel. So what I have here is the Pioneer Elite SPEB-S73LR uh, bookshelf speaker. I'll show you a close-up of what it looks like with the grills off. And I got four of these again. So... These are obviously a little bit different than kind of what you guys are normal, but many of you already know this stuff. But that right there is a five and a quarter inch uh, aluminum woofer. Right there is a concentric um, design speaker with a four inch mid range. And instead of where the dust cap usually goes, that is actually a one inch um, soft dome tweeter. And kind of what makes this speaker special is it has the same four inch uh, mid with one inch soft dome tweeter on top for the height or the Atmos channels. So show you the back as well. So the binding posts for the lower section, that goes to the ear level speakers. So those guys right there. And then that top binding post goes to the height um, channel on top there. So as Gene over in Audioholics, again, please check out his channel. He's uh, one of those guys that kind of gives you straight information. Um, doesn't seem like he has a whole lot of uh, people paying him to say anything. So I love I love the way that he kind of challenges the industry a little bit. So be sure to check him out there. There's kind of what a close-up of what the grill looks like. So, and it also, so it came with four of those bookshelf speakers. And it also came with the matching center channel. So again, what I like about this system is that it has a uh, dual of the five and a quarter inch aluminum woofers. And it has the exact same four inch mid range with that um, one inch soft dome tweeter in the middle. I'll show you what the back looks like. It's kind of standard. These were actually, I bought these from a really nice um, person a little bit up north, but he actually has a YouTube channel as well too. So be sure to check him out. I put a link to his newest video down in the description. Um, his, the name of the channel is Golden Ear Audio, <laughs> Golden Ear Audio Review. Um, and he made me a really good deal on these. I ended up picking up the four bookshelves uh, in the center channel for $400. And the center channel alone is a $400 speaker. And the bookshelves themselves go for about uh, $750 a pair when they were available. So just a smoking deal. About eighteen, about, about $1,900 uh, MSRP. And I ended up picking them up for $400. So they are refurbished. I'm not sure if you guys caught that on the back there show you a close-up of that i'm a fan of buying refurbished equipment actually i probably bought about four or five receivers refurbished um, from companies like accessories for less things like that so with the way i look at refurbished, refurbished products is somebody returned them and then the company went through made sure everything was functioning correctly and then they sell them at a discount so elac has very good refurbished uh, sbs outlet has you know people that return speakers they test them out and then they'll sell them so they have discounts on them sometimes they have blemishes things like that but again you can save some money and that's kind of what this channel is all about so some of the specifications of these speakers are they are a little bit uh, power hungry i would say from a kind of a traditional home speaker the um, sensitivity is 85 db for both the center channel and the bookshelf speakers um, they are all four ohm speakers um, the frequency response is about 50 hertz um, for the bookshelves to 20,000 hertz. And the center channel is uh, 45 hertz to 20,000 because it has an additional five and a quarter inch woofer in there to handle the low end. Um, they're about, uh, about eight inches wide, the bookshelf. They're about 16 inches tall with the cover and they're about 10 inches deep. And the center channel is about 19 inches wide, about 10 inches deep and about seven and a half inches tall. Uh, the weight of the bookshelf speaker is about 15 and a half pounds, and the center channel is about um, about 17 and a half pounds. So, a little bit on the light side, I would say for their for their uh, their size and everything, but still very good construction. These are kind of built by or designed by kind of the what I would call them the Elon Musk of the audio industry, uh, Andrew Jones. He seems to just have a way of making very high quality sounding speakers for very inexpensive budgets. So. Um, again, he's one of those people in the industry who's been brand, uh, kind of bridging that gap between 
really high, um, really good sounding speakers, and then ones that are also affordable for people that are that don't go out there and just spend ten thousand dollars on a spare speakers. One day I would love to be able to do that, but not really on the cards. I can't do that. So that's why again I started this channel to try to highlight deals and. Picking up $1,900 worth of Andrew Jones Pioneer Elite speakers for $400 is a very, very good deal. I'm not expecting you guys to be able to have that type of deal out there. But what I, this channel is just to highlight deals for you to go look because you never know. You could hop on your offer up right now and then there could be something that even beats this deal out there. So, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to do is highlight deals. Also, it's a really good way to get your entry, um, kind of your entry into the hobby. Start off with a couple sets of used speakers, and then that way when you do your dedicated home theater um, and you're willing to spend the money on that system, then you'll have a much more educated way of making the choices. So picking out the subwoofers, picking out the bookshelf speakers, the center channel, obviously reach out to me if you guys have questions along those lines. I'm not in the audio industry. This is just something that I do as a passion project. But again, I've been doing this for... 20 years. So I probably owned 150 different five channel uh, speaker packages, probably 150, 200 subwoofers. Um, they're kind of stacked up all over the place. Um, I'm kind of surrounded by speakers. This is kind of all you see. Everything behind it is kind of chaos in this little room. It's only a little two bedroom, 600 square foot um, duplex that I'm living in. And it's just full of speakers right now. So I got to get these reviews kind of more going, but kind of rambling on a little bit. So what I, the way I have them set up over there, so again, my equipment is a Morantz SR7013 receiver. That is only going to be driving the uh, four height channels or the Atmos channels. And then I'll be using my Morantz MM7055 uh, amplifier to power all the ear level. And when I mean ear level, just what you would find in a traditional bookshelf speaker. Um, this is the way I would recommend you guys doing it for you out there setting up uh, Atmos channels, things like that. Um, Try to give your, if you have an amplifier, obviously the receiver will run all of it, especially in a small room like that. I probably don't even need that amplifier, but I like to give the five channels uh, kind of the main power there. So the amplifier is going to be powering the channels that get the most use, and then the receiver will be powering the four top channels. Um, my room is like Gene over at Audioholics. Again, great guy. Uh, check out his channel. My room is perfect for these. So I've had very good results with these bouncy speakers. So instead of true Atmos channels or height channels, what normally what you would do if you were gonna build a room, you would just have those uh, those four channels built into the top. So you would just you know mount them into the ceiling, drill the hole, mount the speaker in there, and that's your ideal height channels. That way when planes fly over, bullets are going, you'll hear the sound traveling directly above your head. The path that the signal has to take now is shooting it up to the ceiling, and then it has to come back down to your ears. So that is, again, not an ideal situation, but you know what? I'm not living in an ideal world, uh, so I can't do that, pull that off. But the good news for you out there is it definitely added an extra dimension to my um, home theater, listening to these speakers. Um, it, pretty easy to tune. That room, again, is only 12 feet wide by about 16 to 18 feet deep. Um, and the ceilings are low too. So the path is very short and it's, you know, people that have angled ceilings, that's going to be more difficult because then there's more angles involved with the reflection of the sound. So, but again, this room is ideal. If you guys have, a, you know, condos and things like that, this is a pretty standard uh, style living room. So you can actually pull off this um, height channels and all that. Again, it's not an ideal situation, but the good news is you'll you'll definitely add more dimension to your movie watching if you go this route. So I've uh, especially when watching that Mad Max Fury Road, I keep hearing the this when they start Furios is firing up that um, that oil tanker and headed headed out. There's some real Atmos um, signals going on in that, and it just made a real real big difference in my in my viewing um, or my listening habits over there. So. Um, that's kind of the rundown. Again, the, the, the amplifier will be powering the main channels and the receiver will only be powering the four height channels. I'm going to actually play it with the, um, with my, usually I play them without subwoofers, but I think for this setup, I would definitely recommend subwoofers. These have nice, um, bass, but you're only getting down to about that 50 Hertz range, 45 Hertz range. That's really for home theater. You're going to need a subwoofer. So they do have the matching subwoofer to this set as well too, but this set didn't come with them. So I'm going to be running my Martin Logan Dynamo um, dual 10 inch uh, subwoofers, which have had just a killer performance in my room. You guys have seen me go from SVS uh, SB 16 ultras to 
uh, Shu uh, subwoofers to Velodyne subwoofers. And I'll tell you what, in that room over there with the way that I have those little tens elevated above the TV, they do a very good job pressurizing the room and a really, really even bass response with good impact. And that's really what I kind of like. So kind of rambling on, but I'll show you kind of the overview. Um, I'll walk around the room, show you where they like, have everything situated, where the, um, the, the height channels are aiming, and we'll play Mad Max Fury Road and let you guys kind of hear these things. Again, obviously, this isn't the best way to, t uh, this is definitely not the best way to uh, test out what your ears like the sound of and things like that, but I wanted this channel to have some kind of fun content, and usually you guys like that uh, me playing the videos, uh, the movies, or playing the songs and stuff like that. And then we'll jump back over here and I'll give you guys the average guy hi-fi review on these speakers and where I give you the score of kind of my overall impressions on the set. So let's jump over there and watch a little Mad Max. All right, everyone, we got the Pioneer Elite uh, speakers all set up here. We're going to run those dual Martin Logan uh, tenant subwoofers during this scene because I do think that um, these speakers, they have decent uh, bass response, but... For movies and video games, I definitely think they require uh, subwoofers. So we'll just go ahead and run this set with the subwoofers in action. Um, but here we go, just so you guys can kind of see my room. The channel, the um, the bookshelf speakers are really close to the main listening position. I'm keeping the microphone in kind of the central position in the room, so you guys can kind of hear. Hopefully, hear some of the um, different channels and things like that. So a pretty easy room. I've got kind of low ceiling, so um, that's why I think that this room is pretty much ideal for this type of situation, and I feel like a lot of you guys out there in condos and smaller places um, have this size room. So just to give you guys a little bit of a rundown, I'll show you what the speaker wires there. So again, I have the um, kind of those bare wires going to the Atmos channels. Those are going to the, um, the Marantz SR7013, and then those media bra uh, bridge speaker wires with the banana plugs are going to my Marantz uh, MM7055 amplifier. So the ear level speakers, as we call them, those are all the main channels. Those are the five, uh, five channels. And then we have the two subwoofers for the two, and then the Atmos or height channels for the four. So this is a 5.2.4 um, system here. So uh, with which obviously if you guys do the math on that, it's nine, it's nine channels uh, plus the two subwoofer LFE channels. So. Well, let's jump right into it. Mad Max Fury Road. This is the scene where the uh, the War Boys are going after Furiosa, um, which has really good uh, height channel audio in it. So let's jump right into it. I hope you guys enjoyed that brief demo of Mad Max Fury Road. Again, that's one of those movies where I definitely recommend you own it um, if you're into kind of testing speakers, showing off to your friends, that type of thing. The the visuals, the audio, everything, it's just a slam dunk when it comes to the home theater uh, perspective. I, I think that that one is up there with one of my tops when I'm, when I'm kind of showing everything off for, for people. So uh, definitely buy that. Um, now we're on to my favorite part of the video where I give you guys my overall impressions of the speakers um, and then the average guy hi-fi score. So there's five categories that we review speakers off of. There is uh, quality, we go off of sound, we go off of the MSRP pricing, we go off the aesthetics, and we also go off of the my price paid. 
Uh, each category is worth 10 points, and then we just take those scores, average them out, and give you guys the average guy hi-fi score. So we'll just jump right into it. From a quality perspective, I gave them an 8.5 out of 10. I think with what Andrew Jones and Pioneer was able to do for these speakers at, you know, the bookshelves were $750 a pair for everything that you get, considering the woofers are aluminum with rubber surrounds, high-quality binding posts, high-quality grills, um, all of that stuff, plus the extra mid-range, extra tweeter, you know, that's kind of a lot of speaker packed into a $750 package, which um, is just a testament to the design team and all, all that, especially for how they sound and perform. Um, very good speakers. Eight and a half out of 10 when it comes to quality. The only area that I really felt they were kind of lacking was that I felt speakers in that price range use a little bit better quality uh, vinyl, like the wood wood grain vinyl on them. Felt a little bit on the cheaper side than like the Klipsch reference I've had in my hands, those monitor audio bronze speakers that I reviewed. Again, that's a little bit nick picky and also the weight of the weight of the cabinets. When I went to go pick them up, uh, I, I noticed that they were a little bit on the light side. I prefer a little bit more weight. It just tells me that they've used a little bit more bracing and things like that in the internals. I'm sure they're fine. I'm sure that everything's just fine when it comes to all that stuff, knowing Andrew Jones and Pioneer Elite. But those are just minor complaints. Eight and a half out of 10 when it comes to quality. Very good score. Sound, I gave them a nine out of 10. Um, I think that for the kind of the sound stage that they put off, um, the extra channels, all of that, it just crisp detailed highs uh, the imaging was very good you know, basically it's just um i love the fact that all the woofers are all five and a quarter inch woofers all the mid-ranges were four inch mid-ranges all the tweeters are one inch tweeters so everything is kind of timber matched i think that that's probably just uh, in you guys if you know me if you watch this channel i like uh, especially across the front three everything to be matching so um, I just love the sound. It felt like it was kind of coming from everywhere. And obviously that has to do with the height channels that were up there. Nine out of 10 when it comes to sound, good, clean vocals, uh, detailed. I didn't have to adjust the center channel, which a lot of times I have to end up doing kind of to my liking. Ran Odyssey, got them all set up and everything sounded very good. Nine out of 10 when it comes to sound. When it comes to the MSRP pricing, I gave an eight and a half out of 10 with what they were able to do with those extra um, components that were required, the extra binding posts, the extra grill, all of that stuff for $750. Um, I, I think that that's very good for the MSRP pricing. It's it's a lot of speaker for the money. Um, there was some competition, but not really Atmos. A lot of times people would just buy those Atmos modules and set them on top of bookshelf speakers, but there wasn't really much out there unless you look at the Andrew Jones um, entry level uh at most speakers that they made, which I also made a review on, used a little bit smaller woofers, a little bit um, less expensive tweeters, things like that. Um, those speakers, they def these performance of these speakers are definitely better, but they do cost more. So I gave them an eight and a half of 10 when it came to the MSRP pricing. Um, I was trying to bump them up to a nine just for how much speaker you get for that, but it just didn't quite get there. So um, now we're on to the aesthetics. I think that the, the looks of the speakers, I gave them an eight. That's a, again, a very good score, but I prefer this is one of the few sets of speakers I actually like them with the grills on. I think that the way they design the grill that kind of goes up and then the Atmos um, grill butts up against it for a nice kind of smooth front. I think that looks really sharp. I don't like the way that the Atmos modules look up top, uh, but again, that's that's just the way it is. That's the way these speakers were designed. Also, the dust that collects on that Atmos um, grill, that's something to consider down the road. You'll be cleaning that, but the good news is they're actually made out of plastic. Um, the backing of them so you can actually wash them. I ended up washing those things in the sink and then drying them out so they look nice and clean for the review. Just make sure you don't use soap that's going to remove the uh, glue that uh, adheres the grill cloth to the plastic uh, frame because that would not be good. Um, eight out of ten when it comes to the aesthetics, you know, they're, they're, they look good. They're just not going to knock your socks off. My price paid, I gave them a seven and a half out of ten. Uh, that's the lowest of these scores, but still a good score when it comes to my, my um, reviews. And the reason I did that is just because of deals that I've had in the past. You know, I picked up a set of Andrew Jones Gallo speakers, um, the Nuclea speakers, not too long ago for $100. So I've got some pretty amazing deals, as you guys have seen. Those Polk LSIM uh, 703s for $350. You know, the, there's some deals out there that are better than these. But with that said, I paid $400, which is the price. That's the MSRP P price for the center channel. And I got the four bookshelves, which are $750 a pair. Uh, for $400. So the total MSRP was about $1,900 and I got them for $400. So still a very good score, 7.5 out of 10 when it comes to my price paid. So again, quality 8.5, sound 9, 
MSRP eight and a half, um, aesthetics eight, and then my price paid seven and a half. That averages out to a 41.5 out of 50, which is an 83% average guy hi-fi score. I really enjoyed my time with these. Again, I was kind of dreading them just due to the extra time that it takes to get them set up uh, in my room. I got to remove all those speaker wires that I had to end up running to get to those extra height channels and everything. But um, it definitely enjoyed my time with them. It was kind of eye-opening. No matter what, if I ever get uh, enough money to go buy a house where I have a dedicated room, I will be going the right route, um, like Gene says, in ceiling Atmos speakers without a doubt. I'll be doing four of those if I ever get around to buying a house with a big enough dedicated room. Doesn't make sense, but for people like me that are in smaller units, um, you know, in, you know, you're renting, things like that. You can't drill into the ceilings. Then this will definitely get you by. It's not the ideal Atmos setup. I'm not going to sit here and just tell you that it is. But it really did add, add an extra dimension to my overall um, enjoyment of the of watching movies. So, you know, with those reflections coming down, you can actually hear the height channels. I was a little bit you know, skeptical of that, running it in a 5.2.4. But totally enjoyed my time with them on to the next though i'll be listing these things for sale uh coming up here shortly and then i'm sure they'll sell quickly and i'll just put that money right back into another set of speakers to review for you guys so if this is the type of stuff you guys are into um if you're trying to save money if you guys have good experiences or if you get good deals please uh, people are starting to comment in my videos and that's really helping the channel so i appreciate everybody that does that if you get a good deal on something be sure to share it it seems like the group of people that i'm attracting to this channel are people out there that maybe don't have thousands and thousands of dollars to throw at home theater gear, but they still want a good quality home theater experience. So I'm going to try to help you guys with open box deals that I get. Now, I'm not saying that you can get these deals in your market, but I want to do is just open your eyes up to the ability that, hey, the, you know, especially around the Seattle area, I mean, there's um, used equipment all the time and it just comes and it goes and it comes and it goes. And I'm not broken hearted when it, something sells. Sometimes I am. I missed out on a couple deals that I still think about years down the road. But um, it's always coming and going. So if as long as you're not like just looking for one particular speaker or one particular brand and you have a pretty wide a cast, a pretty wide net, then you'll be running across some pretty good deals. So if you guys are into that type of stuff, uh, saving a little bit of money, just want an average guy. This isn't my job. This is just a little side thing that I've been doing during COVID times. Um, and I'll continue going on with the, all the following and everything that I've got now. It seems to be getting a footing. So this is the type of stuff you're onto. I'd love to have you stick around. Please subscribe to my channel. Again, my name is Dustin. The name of the channel is Average Guy Hi-Fi.